Hi YouTubers, I'm Al Gracian from elbowpepper.com. It's the beginning of September. I'm out here in the garden and uh, many people may be closing up shop here, but uh, I have a nice crop of kale, broccoli, but something in particular that I want to show you today. In this edible landscape, what's this? Check it out guys. We have our second harvest now that's come in of these wine cap mushrooms. How cool is this? Check out over here too, another spot where I put some. Just mushroom after mushroom. All these guys tucked all inside here. Isn't this great? So let me show you a little bit about what I did to set this up this spring. And maybe you might get a few pointers to help you out. We're looking at wine caps, Stufaria rugosa annulata. Great for beginners, these mushrooms are easy to identify. They're perfect for applying to in-ground beds. As they break down cellulose, they'll quickly build rich black soil, and earthworms absolutely thrive. My preferred supplier for mushroom spawn is Field and Forest Products. That's fieldforest.net. They provide lots of great tips and information to get you started. I split an order with my dad, reserving half of a five and a half pound bag of sawdust spawn for myself. In smaller areas, they recommend pig spawn, but if you keep it moist, sawdust spawn can work too, providing quicker results. I'm in Western PA here in zone 6B. In mid-April, a friend of mine dropped off a load of mulberry branches from a tree he cut down. I chipped them up in my small wood chipper and selected the areas I wanted to inoculate and began by spreading my first layer of wood chips. I didn't use any cardboard, just fresh wood chips, along with some old straw from my strawberry beds. These substrates will serve as the fuel for my mushrooms. Wood chips laying in your beds makes them look a little different, but in the end, we'll be able to keep them looking nice, good enough even for people in an HOA. One five and a half pound bag can cover over 50 square feet on wood chips, but with my half bag, I covered 16 square feet, which matches the application rate for straw beds. That's 2.75 ounces per square foot. I'm applying that in three layers, so 0 0.9 ounces per layer per square foot. Patch sizes ranged from just one square foot to as much as four square feet. These are all areas within my existing edible landscape beds, under fruit trees, berry bushes, asparagus, and so on. So let's look at how I put this all together. Layer one, I applied two inches of wood chips and marked off my inoculation areas. I watered the chips, applied sawdust spawn, mixing it in, and then watered it. For layer two, I applied one or two inches of straw that had soaked in water for three days. I applied more sawdust spawn and water. Then layer three was more wood chips with the last application of spawn. I mixed and watered it in and prepared to make the bed look a little nicer. By adding a fourth layer, you create a protective skin that can improve moisture retention. But in my beds, this layer was a conventional wood bark mulch. The result was a bed that looks like any other landscape bed. No less attractive wood chips or unsightly chunks of straw. If you live in an area that is heavily policed by a homeowner's association, this solution is for you. Gorilla gardening at its finest. I set these beds up on April 17th. Our spring came early and was fairly wet. After eight weeks, on March 12th, I had my first crop of wine caps. These were just a foregleam though. Now it's September 8th and a much larger batch of mushrooms has emerged with more on the way. I prefer to slice them at the base to avoid disturbing the mycelium. You can store them in a brown paper bag in the fridge unwashed for a couple of days. Just dust off the dirt before cooking. We took the smaller buttons and added them to a homemade chicken noodle soup. You can saute these too, of course, or the caps could be stuffed. 
I had too many, though, so I dehydrated my extras, including the stems. I sliced them thin and ran my food dehydrator at 120 degrees Fahrenheit for eight hours. The low temperature preserves the nutrients. And if they snap when you bend them, you know they are totally dried out. Seal them tight in a glass jar away from heat and sunlight. Well guys, how cool is that, huh? Even though it's September, here I am uh, having more and more things coming in, including things I've never been able to even think about growing in the past. I'm utilizing existing space and putting in multiple functions within that space, stacking those functions. Not only am I getting a harvest of mushrooms, but I'm also taking a resource that might have been dispensed with otherwise, such as those wood chips. And I'm also building soil and helping beneficial microorganisms. So it's a win-win-win. And even if you're in one of those HOAs, those homeowner associations, where you can't seem to get away with doing anything, well, taking some wood chips, putting them down, covering them with a nice ornamental mulch is a great way to disguise this little project. And then months later, lo and behold, boom, you have this little ninja harvest that comes along. I hope that this video has inspired you and given you some cool ideas of some things that maybe you might try in your home, in your garden. I appreciate you taking time to watch and for supporting my channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. As always, happy gardening.